This is Michelle and welcome to Raising Your Consciousness. This is a space to raise your consciousness and reach your full spiritual potential. And that's through spiritual, esoteric, and even magical practices. This is a space to bring happiness and meaning back into your life. Let's get started. Hi, you guys. This is Michelle Thompson. And today I am super excited to introduce a couple of my co-hosts today, Teresa Dion Tone and Lori Cross that are really good friends of mine and really amazing spiritual people that have this amazing YouTube channel that does a lot of like spiritual stuff. And so I was a guest on their show one day and they started talking about dream sharing. And I was like, wait, 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 hold on. You actually go into each other's dreams and they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh my God. I have to do a show with them because I think this is super exciting. I'm going to go ahead and let Teresa kind of talk a little bit about the types of dreaming and then we'll dive into some of their stories and, you know, the fun stuff. Talk to me and tell me a little bit about that. Well, first of all, thanks for having us on. It's a joy to be here with you. Oh, it's always a joy just to do anything. (laughs) Oh, we always have fun with you. Yeah, well, yeah. dreams. Okay, yeah, we've been talking about them periodically in different uh, dreaming, shared dreaming, and lucid dreaming. And uh, uh, there's like what we have found out uh, beyond your regular dreaming. There's just dreaming, and you know those are kind of funky because anything can happen in a regular dream. Mm-hmm. You could be paddling a boat down the middle of a river, and all of a sudden a castle appears on a piece of land, and some knight in shining armor is coming out and asking you to come into the castle. You go yeah. into the castle, and all of a sudden, you're on an airplane. You know, things just keep changing in a, in a dream. Some are more consistent than others, but some can get pretty wild. And the mm-hmm. symbolism is off the charts. And so we both, uh, Lori introduced me to a book called, um, uh, I think it's from Betty Bethard's book on dream interpretations. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you learn all about the different kinds of types of symbology, and these dreams are nothing about what you think they're about. Oh, wow. so. If you're interacting with someone intimately or friendly, somebody you really care about or really have a good friendship with, you're really not dreaming about that person. You're dreaming about an aspect of yourself that you see in them that you value that you might like to have for yourself. Mm. That's just one example. Dreams in of themselves are just chock full of messages and information. It could be you're, you're just so, you're conscious, you're not consciously but you're subconsciously processing mm-hmm. things that are going on in your life or things that you've been through. You might be working through trauma. So you might find that you're actually learning something about your life and how to solve problems in your own life once you sit down and do your own dream analysis. Wow. You might find out you have insecurities. I know. I actually did a, a podcast with Carrie about dream, lucid dreaming and stuff. And we, we had a full on conversation about that. So I totally yeah know exactly what you're saying i mean it is yeah. it is so much fun in the lucid dreaming now there's different kinds of shared dreaming there's another kind of dreaming called uh, uh meshed dreaming or mm-hmm. meshing and that's when um you start to share your dream with someone but you don't realize you're actually sharing it with them until you guys get together later and talk about it. you go oh, we had the same dream and uh, i'll give you a, for instance it's not planned for which you're going to find out you do with lucid dreaming when you share a lucid dream. But with mesh dreaming, it's another form of off-the-chart dreaming, just like your regular dreaming. It's just that, let's say the two of you, a friend of you, of, of yours, has gone out to a movie with you, and you've watched a superhero movie of some kind. And um, you come home that night, and both of you have a dream. that you're a superhero in that same movie, for example. And... You get together the next day. You say, that was some movie. I had a dream that I was in that movie last night. Oh, really? So did I. And I said, I dreamt you were in there, but you were wearing a red suit. Yeah, I was. And you were wearing a green suit. I'm like, you're kidding. And then as you start talking and sharing the details, you'll find that the majority of the details are matching up, even though you didn't plan on doing it. It's because you were both influenced by that movie, for sure. But Mm -hmm. what is that psychic connection that just occurred between the two of you that you can both be in the same dream experiencing many, many of the same activities with subtle differences and yet 
we can both recall it in exact detail. And that's actually happened to me a couple of times with Brian Lunsford. We mm-hmm. just didn't, we didn't plan on it. We just started talking and found out we were having the same dream. The other thing that happens in a spiritual community like ours with everybody being connected is that we find out maybe not the same day, but over a period of three or four days that a bunch of us have had a very similar dream where we've either seen two or three of the people that are saying they had the same dream in the dream or none of them, but you had the same dream they had. So it's a type of meshing. It's not deliberate. It just occurs because of that psychic connection between people. Now, it gets really freaky in lucid dreaming when you do a planned for experience. Now, people mostly mostly know that lucid dreaming is when you take control of your own dream. You're aware that you're dreaming. So during the dream, certain things make you aware of the fact that, hey, I'm having a dream. This isn't real. I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. And I can take control of the dream. And if you're a powerful manifester, you can change the circumstances in that dream. You can change the scenery. You can change what you're wearing. You can change add people, delete people. It's like being a computer programmer or programming your own video. and You can add or remove elements. Manifest a cocktail. Make it a dance party. Change the dance party into a picnic. You can do all kinds of things in a lucid dream. But when you do it with someone else, it's doubly powerful. And that requires a team approach. And that's what Lori and I do. Oh, we wow. sit down oh. before we go to bed. We set an intent. What do you want to do tonight? I want to explore. I want to go to the Grand Canyon. Okay. We can do that. Let's go to the Grand Canyon. Are we going to stay there or are we going to go on a mule backpacking? We, we describe what we think we would like to experience in that dream. Sometimes we, and we, it's very important to pick a uh, meeting up place, a, a specific place that you want to meet up. We'll play background music too to get in the mood. Like if you're going to the uh, island and you want, you want some tropical music, we'll, we'll put some tropical music on and fall asleep to the music. So you're setting a very strong intent and an exact location and you're deciding what you're going to wear in the dream, but you don't tell each other that part. But you'll say, I'm picking, she'll say, I'm picking you up in my jet. I have a jet. Like, oh, you have a jet. Figures. (laughs) We'll decide the certain elements. And um, you can even go back in time. We decided to do a time travel lucid dream where we went back to the original viewing of Phantom of the Opera Mm -hmm. when it first opened in London. At their at their opera house, so oh, wow, you can, you, you can decide a date, time, time period, whatever you want. You can do it with one person or several people, as long as you. I think you have to have, and I've talked to Karen about this because Karen Kasparlov does it too. And um, you have to have a really strong uh, connection with certain people and a great deal of trust and respect for those people. You really have to trust who you're sharing a dreaming experience with because anybody can take control of the dream and change elements within the dream. But basically it boils down to this. You, you actually are purposefully entering into an agreement with one another to have a shared experience. So unlike other kinds of dreaming, you get ready for it. You get prepped for it in whatever way you feel you need to get that done. And lots of times what we'll do is um, you set an intent and an agreement upon where you're going, what you want to experience while you're there. Not in great detail, but you might point out a few few points of interest that you want to explore. You might determine um, a specific meeting place to meet up or a mode of transportation. Lori told me once she was going to send me a, a helicopter, and she did. It landed out front of my house. But you can also determine the time period or the epoch. You can go back in time. You can go into the future. You can recreate your avatar. It doesn't have to be the physical body that you have in this life. You can go back into a past life that you've had with one of these people in the dream and re-experience certain things or see it from a different perspective. So all these things can occur. Time travel was part of it. And, um, so you, you set all this up ahead of time. You might even listen to some music, right, Lori? You listen to some music, and it sets you in the mood, puts you in the mood for where you're going and what you what you want to do when you get there. So once you've got all that lined up, you go to bed, you go to sleep, 
And you, you end up seeing and connecting with that person in your dream at that location. And uh, you exchange information about, well, we're here. Where do we want to start? You know, And you, you just roll with the flow of the dream. And uh, I love it when uh, we're just walking along and all of a sudden she manifests a completely different feel of floral, floral flowers. And uh, she might change her outfit. She's a very, very powerful manifester, more so than me. And uh, she never ceases to surprise me when she comes up with something special and unique in the dream. Um, but then I do, too. I'll, I'll change things as well. I want to ask you a question. She's sitting here, like, sitting on the edge <laughs> of my here, you know, trying. I'm like, oh, my God, I want to know. I want to understand this. Okay. I. How do you actually, I know you say you set an intention, but. Uh-huh. I've actually set intentions with somebody and tried to do it and they were like, no, nothing, you know, like uh-huh. how do you actually, how do you actually get into a lucid dream and how do you, I mean, like, do you have the steps that you go through? I mean, I understand you're setting your environment, but to me, I want to know, like, how do you get into that? Like, when yeah. you uh-huh. You know? got. You have to get out of your head. You have yeah. to get out of your head. You have uh-huh. to get into your heart space, um, and you have to know that you're a very highly creative being. So you can create and do anything is possible in the dream state. The prep for it, as Teresa was saying, is really important because you, first of all, you've got to have a really close connection. That is, bar none, the most important aspect of of doing this kind of stuff. We kind of stumbled upon this because we had spent, what, Teresa, the last five years getting to know each other and becoming very close and also understanding that the reason we are so close is because we truly are twin souls. We are part of the same soul. So we have an innate connection. We have past life connections. And that's what's really important to understand here. You don't just go, hey, I got a great friend. Let's just try this and do this. You've got to <laughs> work at it. You have yeah. to know, you know, where you're going to go and how you're going to do it. And then you have to experiment. You have to exercise it. And then once you start getting pieces of the puzzle and things start coming together, then it becomes more powerful. And then you've absolutely uh, established a connection for that dream uh, that you're going to experience together. And again, no expectations. You just heart space it and you, and you move yeah. through it that way. Yeah. That's, and it might know. not, it might not always work, Michelle. There's been times where we mm-hmm. woke up in the morning and said, sorry, I couldn't connect with you last night. I was just too tired or I yeah, are you dreaming about something else? Or... You may have had something going on, or you just, it has to come together perfectly. Everything has to align, just like, you know, uh, being an enlightened being. Everything flows and aligns and comes together. And then that is the result. That is the flowering mm-hmm. of the expectation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what I'm hearing you say is you, you have to clear your mind, right? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm into a lucid space and I'm going to tell you what I do to enter into a lucid dream is Mm -hmm. I I have to really clear my my head okay Mm -hmm. I have to just focus on nothingness and just stare at the blackness okay and then soon all of a sudden it seems like almost like a circle starts to open up you know almost Mm -hmm. like those opening up and then before I know it I'm in it and mm-hmm. I, I'm experiencing this. That's one way. Sometimes it happens without me realizing it. Like, mm-hmm. And I think it's more like astral projection. And it's like, I'm yep. in my face. And it's very real. And somebody just touched me on the arm. And I felt it. And I reached over. And it's like, whoa, whoa. You know, I can that it. has happened to me. I've literally been touched on the top of my foot. And I felt somebody sit on my bed. Yeah. And- only I was not in a dream. <laughs> I was awake. So that's what, you know, I was talking to my proctor the other day because not too long ago, like mm. week, two weeks ago, something like that. I, um, I, I had done all my rituals. I had done all my banishing. I clear my space and I invoked the Archangel Gabriel. And I was like, all right, Gabriel, what you got for me? You know? <laughs> and so, I'm like sitting here and I'm just kind of waiting and all of a sudden I feel, I 
feel and see this light descending onto me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then right after that, I felt a hand on my shoulder and it felt like a touch. Okay. Yeah. And I wasn't asleep and I didn't think I was entering lucid dreaming, but I felt that touch on my shoulder. And then the thing said, <clears throat> said um, you know, kind of gave me like a little message of something that I needed personally. And then I reached over like on, cause it touched me on my left side and I reached over and touched it and I could felt, feel an arm like mm -hmm. physically. And so I was, what the heck? Yeah. You're in the state of non-resistance. That's, mm -hmm. that's exactly that's, yeah. when it comes through mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. but you can't mm -hmm. offer any resistance whatsoever, or it just doesn't work. Now, this is something that's unique. I feel between Teresa and I, so whatever people get out of that, that's interesting, but everyone has their own little process of doing things. Yeah. Right. I use a, um, I use a modality of uh, remote viewing. So what will happen is, is I'll get a feel for the landscape. I'll get a feel for the atmosphere mm -hmm. and I project myself into it. Like I'm astro traveling. I don't have anybody, any being touching me or any angel or any kind of presence. I just go into the, that vision of the island or that vision of where we're going. Yeah, which is um, your unique process of getting there. It's my there. unique process of getting so there. So you develop once that I'm yourself. There, yeah, right. And then once I'm there, usually during the meetup, I'll feel something on my hand. And it's usually Lori grabbing my hand. Mm -hmm. There you are. So we make that connection both etherically and physically, it feels like, in our astral bodies, so that that grounds me to the actual dream world that we're in. Mm. It's almost like, feel she's come with me. Away, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If yeah. I feel she's drifting away and I'm drifting away, and we don't have both a sense. And so this is where your senses come in. You're all of your psychic senses, your smell, touch, hearing. Um, you could feel sensations like the heat of the sun on your face or the wind you just open yourself up to feeling all of the sensations so you're visualizing and you've got clear sentience clear knowing you've got all your clear skills in full tone mm -hmm. full-on mode and the minute we make that physical touch i feel grounded to the dream and then the dream can proceed but if I, if, if i haven't found her and i haven't at least touched her face or touched her hand or Something like that, that I feel a drift. Yeah. A also, drift away. So, so it anchors you there. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. You also want to be very clear about where you're going to go uh, because we have, we have uh, kind of mixed up our, uh, our destinations and I ended yeah. up one place and she ended up another. So be really clear on where you're going. <laughs> Otherwise you're kind of standing there going, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the only time I've ever experienced a shared dreaming experience was with when I had um, that Dallas master, uh, you know, as my teacher and we yeah. used to do it almost every night. He would literally, I just sit there and wait and then when he, <laughs> I just sit there and wait. I was like, any time now, sometimes it'd be hours. And I'm just sitting here waiting and nothing, 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 nothing. And then I feel a tap on my shoulder and boom, we, he'd take me. It's like he was pulling me into it. Mm -hmm. And we go somewhere. And it was, um, it was always a really cool experience. And I always like wish that I could find somebody who could do it with me. And I just haven't had that success because nobody had the ability to, mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. You know, that Makes kind sense. Of yeah. It's definitely, you've got to be really connected and you've got to be real clear on what, where you're going and what you're going yeah. to do. And then you have to practice. You have to continue to do it. And as, and the more that you do it, just like a muscle, you know, moving that muscle, it gets stronger and stronger each time. And then it seems to me, Teresa, we recall a lot more about the dream. And we also um, have the same things going on. She may have yeah. like a slight variation, but but all in all, the nucleus of the dream is the same. Absolutely. Well, so yeah. I want to know how this whole thing started. Like, how did you, like, get into dream sharing together? 
Well, um, we've become very close friends, and so we are not in proximity physically to each other, which is kind of interesting because uh, by being in this situation, we've had to develop a way to kind of connect um, yeah. because we can't connect physically. Um, yeah. It's like having your best friend, you know, living 3,000 miles away from you, and you you know, the only way you can it connect is. is through your phone, well, <laughs> through your phone or, you know, a video <laughs> chat or, you know, a phone call. Um, so it was a way to kind of practice and go to see things like uh, we went to Disneyland uh, not too yeah. long ago last week. That was fun. Uh, we've been to Brazil. We've been to Jamaica. Um, you know, we've seen uh, uh, operas and plays and things like that. Um, just recently we did one where, um, I had a boat in, uh, Nexus, uh, Greece, um, because it's so Gosh. beautiful there. I'm like, I've got a yacht and you're going to meet me on the yacht and I'm going to take you to some falls and we're going to, you know, go have dinner and we're going to do this and we're just going to play and have fun. We're, we're actually virtually doing all the things that we would have done had we been in closer proximity. Right. So we're very compatible that way. Okay. So, but. Lori, mm -hmm. how, what was that first time you did it together? Was it an accident or was it, Hey, you know, I heard about this shared dreaming thing. Let's try it together. Like how did it? It was kind of an accident. It was, uh, we were yeah. discussing, um, the, the dream that we had had. And then we started realizing we were having so many similarities and then it really started to connect. And then we realized that hey, wait a minute, there's really something to this because you're right. saying the same thing I'm saying. And it started off small. There'd be one or two things that really she yeah. would hit on or I would hit on. And then uh, further down the road as we advanced, um, mm -hmm. then it became a lot clearer and then you would get more and more of the uh, dream. And yeah. so I recall what kicked it off was we were sharing the idea that we had had the same dream. So we knew we were meshing. We were having that dream messer that was going mm -hmm. on naturally between us. But it was so very powerful and so very spot on that we said, hey, if we're doing that naturally, what would happen if we took control of the dream? That's where I do, stepped we, in. We <laughs> both do lucid dreaming. So yeah. can we do lucid dreaming to get you? Yeah. Go ahead, Lori. In my mind, I'm thinking anything is possible in the dream state. Yeah. And yeah. anything is possible in the 3D state as well. It's just a matter of being open to it. So once I realized that, then I just started becoming very creative on how I did it. Like, you know, coming and picking you up in a, in a helicopter yeah. or yeah, picking you up at the airport or. Uh, oh, oh, but there's one other thing, Lori. <laughs> uh, and that's what this is an important element. Okay. Michelle, we did it because, okay. So we had that question. I wonder if we could do this. The very first thing we did is let's go into a past life. You see, we've had numerous past lives together. Numerous. In various different ways. Various mm -hmm. different ways. And so we picked one. And we said, okay, if we're going to do this, let's do it in a familiar space that mm -hmm. we are already connected to. Yeah. So if we're going to try this, let, let's not just lucid dream for the heck of lucid dreaming, but because we were testing it. So we chose a time period where we had both lived in, in, and had a relationship in that time period. And so we already had the memories of that environment. And we knew what we were probably going to experience, or at least be familiar enough with the elements within that period to know that we could take control of it. So that's what we did. We set the intent. We set the music. We everything. We connected mm -hmm. in the dream. And she started taking control of the different elements. So I said, oh, this is definitely a lucid dream because she can switch things around at will and so can I. Hey, if but, you can bring a blender to the beach yeah. Yeah, without any know. power, <laughs> you can wow. do anything in a dream. Yeah. And wow. that's what's so fascinating about it because it's like, where are we going tonight? I don't know. Where do you want to go? All right, well, let's choose a place. And then we break it all down. All right. Okay. And then before we go to sleep, I always set the intent, like, this is where, I, you know, this is how I want it to go. Just some guidelines. And this is what I want to touch on. And then I kind of put that out there because thoughts are things. And, and if I put that out in the, in the ether, ethereal realm, it gets picked up. And okay. then she'll, she'll pick it up from there. 
See? Yeah. So have you guys ever like went to another planet? Yes. Yes. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. okay, so my curiosity is like, you know, <laughs> there. it's like, okay, so you went to another planet and was there living beings there? Like, did you interact with anybody else or see anybody or did they see you? I mean, how did that whole thing go? Teresa has an interesting story. She's actually been to Venus and um, you, you did share some of that with me, Teresa, but it was fascinating right, right. because you did meet um, entities from there. Yep. And I saw other people in our group there too. Oh, you have to tell me that. I want to hear that story. <laughs> it's it's well, awesome. We went to the sun. Lori and I went to the sun and yes, we interacted with energy beings that gave Lori some significant downloads, but then we went to Mars together and explored the after effects of Mars's destruction and saw archaeological sites. And remembered it triggered memories enough of uh, in us of having some experiences on Mars before it before it destroyed itself. Then we went to uh, what she's talking about is I had a um, a recent dream, lucid dream where I started dreaming that I was floating in space, which I do all the time, <laughs> and um, an energy being approached me and touched me on the elbow and said, "Come with me. I need to show you something." And right away, my spidey senses went up, and I'm like, well, who are you? Who do you represent? Who are you? Are you of love and light? Are you from divine source? Are you an alien, or are you a higher aspect of myself? I asked all these questions to test it first. Mm -hmm. And the response I got was, yes, I'm a higher aspect of, of your future, and I need to show you the, the our guides your guides want me to show you some truths you need to know because you've had a bunch of questions about some things that you and Lori are doing here lately with the program and we want to we want to give you some some affirmations so we're going to take you on a journey so we traveled to Venus I said this is Venus and she said yes we're approaching Venus because I recognized it and as we were getting closer and closer to it the dream started to change and I started falling into their ethereal energy. Mm -hmm. And so even though I knew my body was back in my bedroom, I knew that I was in an etheric body now, going into Venus, but the whole energy changed. And as I was going into the planet itself, I saw Venus from its astral projection, its astral essence, which was similar to a tree of life image. Oh, wow, that's interesting. And the tree was growing from the ground with these very strong roots in the ground. And there was a trunk. And then there were these major branches going in different directions. And off of each branch were limbs, multiple limbs. And I'm, and I'm looking at it, and it's glowing golden glow. That's a golden glow, and it was very transparent. And it had sac some type of sacred geometry, but they were more square and circular and lines. It looked like circuitry. But I couldn't tell for sure. I just thought that was weird. And I'm like, uh-oh, here's something unusual. Now, when something unusual pops up in a regular dream, you're not having a lucid dream. Mm -hmm. So I, I asked her, I said, what am I looking at? She says, that is all, the blueprint. What you're looking at is the blueprint of all creation because Venus, she started to explain to me what Venus's role was in the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And then basically Venus absorbs all of the energy from all the history of all of the evolutions of all the planets in our solar system. So as they go through their cycles of time and as they're giving off their energies and their consciousness, it's all getting recorded and downloaded in light rays to Venus. Venus holds that information just as your oversoul holds the information for you. Yeah, I think it's the Venus Akash records. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting because there's a lot of like myths and and stories about Venus being the planet of love. Well, there's that too. And I asked her, mm -hmm. so I said, so it's 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 a database. Are you telling me this is a command and control center for the universe? And she says, not exactly. It's more from a heart space. She says, it's all about the energy. I'm going to take you in there and going to feel the energy, and, and then you're going to remember. So she pulled me into that tree, 
I was overcome with the most incredible experience of love I've ever had in my life. And it was not a physical love. It was just a, an overwhelming. Unconditional uh, love. Unconditional, like a blanket coming around you. And it was mm -hmm. pure love and it was feminine. It was very feminine. You got the whole sense of creation being held by mother. You mm -hmm. know, that feeling you had when you had with your mom was holding you, that security and that feeling. So you felt all that divine energy coming in and you could get a sense for what they're really about and, and they're just higher aspects of all of us who have made it through our initiations to the extent that we were able to ascend out of matter once we shut our bodies and we were and we if we if we've made it through our initiations and have decided not to reincarnate, we can go to some place like Venus. And that is a school. Mm -hmm. So she showed me that every branch on that tree was a separate temple. So then a branch would form into a temple. And we would see all of the initiates all together relearning and re-experiencing and honing and strengthening their psychic abilities. Oh. It's a it's like a mystery school for psychics. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I can describe it in human terms. Wow. Because it has initiates from other planetary bodies as well, other aspects of Earth from Mars, Jupiter, um, the sun. It, it, there's just other kinds of energy beings in there, and they even come from other universes to take classes, I guess, mm. or to get their instruction or initiation at Venus. But Venus is a school. It's a mystery school, and they're focusing on psychic abilities. Yeah, Earth's and not the only school out Earth there. Earth is not the only one. <laughs> so, uh, But they just don't have the kind of matter. Earth is the only one that has the heaviness or the matter that we have. They don't have the duality. They don't have the division between male and female. They don't have any of that. It's but a they higher, do learn. Higher yeah. school. They do learn on a very high etheric level. And so she was showing me all of this. And then she said, do you remember? So, so they're all priestesses. Priest, priestesses. There's male energy there too. But I was shown all these priestesses. And I even saw myself. Mm. And it, I was in the avatar that I was in when I was in Atlantis. And then I saw Sophia Rasmussen and I saw Lori and I saw a bunch of people that we know that were initiating there on Venus. And she says, this is what you, this is where you came from before you went down to Earth to help Earth. Mm. You're tied to the people around you so much more than you uh -huh. could ever imagine. Wow, this yep. is interesting. This is really fascinating. Yeah. So um, I have another question. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about one of the first things you said about being a powerful manifester. And you said, if you're a powerful manifester, you can do this. Um, when I think of manifesting, obviously, I think of bringing, you know, taking your will and making it manifest into your own personal reality. But mm -hmm. I'm curious, like... When you say that, are you saying if I create it there, I can create it here, or by creating it there, I create it here, or am I interpreting something? Totally <laughs> hmm. I, I uh -huh. think they're two separate things, actually. Uh huh. I was just curious. Can you do? Can you like in a dream state or a lucid dream? If you create it there, can you? Can it be like? Brought into this reality? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Karen, just... Karen, Karen says she can, and, and, here's, and here's the story she shares with that. Mm -hmm. Who's Karen? Um, Karen is Queen of Quartz. She's on our show oh. all the time. Okay. Runs the Crystal Network website. Mm -hmm. She manages and operates that. She's the, the hard rock miner that we have on all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who she is. Okay, so um, she is a Toltec warrior also. She's a Toltec initiate, and uh, she has some experiences with real life, present life experiences in interacting with the tribal elders there. And um, so she has a background with them that's highly connected. But in any case, she had a dream group that she helped coordinate that were experiencing dreams together, lucid dreams. And on one of these dreams, which was part of her purpose, and that's how she discovered her purpose, by the way, outside of her regular job. She had this lucid dreaming experience where she found was on a crystal dig site, and they were digging for a certain type of crystal, 
And she found a whole uh, line of this, and I forget what they call that when you find a whole score. And um, her her download was, you need to bring this back to Earth now, because it's part of the Earth's crystalline grid, which has been not dormant, but not as active as it used to be. In a different time in consciousness, back in Atlantis and Egypt and East India, people knew how to activate that grid and work with it for time travel, for, for traveling, for connections with one another, for telepathy, for everything you could think of healing. But the grid over time, as we fell out of, away from source and as we fell deeper into matter, we forgot these tools. And not everybody was going to mystery schools anymore. And so over time, there was another overlay over top of that crystal grid, which involved different impulses that are that are really working against us. Impulses that don't want to see us ascend. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening is, is she wants to reactivate, you know, she's been given a mission to strengthen and reactivate that grid. So she wanted those crystals. And they showed her in the dream. And she was digging them up in the dream. When she came out of that dream, a few days, I don't know if it was a week later, I forget the span of time, um, between when she came out of the dream and when she actually went to that location where they told her it was, she went with a group of people and she dug those suckers up and brought them into this now. Mm. It's like she did and it she, before. It's yeah, like she had done it in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she brought, and she ended up distributing those crystals to every single member of this soul club. And it's all over the world. These crystals and now they're are all over connecting the world. us. Yeah. In key places, I have a piece of it right here myself. Same here. Oh. So wow. she manifested everything that happened in that lucid dream. She brought in. It's not like she woke up the next morning and was staring at a crystal sitting on her desk. No. But what she got from the dream was where to go, where to find it, what the purpose was, what she was supposed to do with it, and she had her mission that she chose for herself to do that in alignment with that dream. And the time text had already given her a prophecy. So I think it's Oh, sorry, Lori. <laughs> I, I think she was reminded. I don't think it, yeah. I think it was something that was placed her path in front of her. And I think it yeah. was a way for her to be, to re remember what her path was and what she needed right. to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, Teresa, when you were talking about a grid that was used before for time travel and healing and stuff like that, that sounds like the Merkaba. And there's a lot of stories behind that about how it's, it's been kind of like overlaid and kind, mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. and kind of pushed down and it was difficult to activate. Do you have any um, knowledge about that? Minimal at best, but I can tell you this. I'm not deeply steeped in it as much as I'd like to be, but Karen tells the story on the website. So mm -hmm. if you go to www.qofqcrystalnetworks.com, there's a whole section on the prophecy from Australia. There's a whole section on what they're doing with it and explains the crystal grid. And we just did a show on it with Karen, what was it, Lori, almost two months ago, mm -hmm. where she came in and gave an update. So if you go into our selection list, you'll see... What is the website? Um, the website is www.qofqcrystalnetwork.com. Okay. All right, you guys, that's www.qofqcrystalnetwork.com. We have her on as a guest. Yes, this she would love to. Very interesting topic. I mean, I would, and I would like to have one yeah, of those. Yeah, she would love to. <laughs> yeah. And let me tell you, you know, in ancient days, they, they used the ley lines and they built their structures on those ley lines to align with different cosmic star configurations. We all know that. And so, and our consciousness was such that we still remembered that connection with the cosmos and how to use those tools and how to align our buildings. And over time, that didn't become, we were doing it more internally. Uh -huh. And for those of us who are spiritually reawakening now, our spiritual connection, we are remembering how. To do it only instead of having to rely physically on a ley line, we're able to do it tele, you know, more psychically now. Because our consciousness has shifted and evolved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, however, 
there's still great value in reestablishing different connection points in that grid, like Australia with America and America with South America. And so there are certain connection points that are just boosted right. by the by the crystal grid. But, but we're, we are the grid now. We are the grid. Yeah. So I know we're getting a little off topic, but this is mm -hmm. very fascinating. Um, you said that you had one of these crystals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, does she sell them? Or is he has actually given them out to different members of the community, oh, okay. and um, and she still has some. And when new people get involved in the community, if they decide to be part of that effort, part of that intent, she she sends them the crystal. She oh. is she is quite the artist, so she does carve um, things into crystals, and you can purchase it off you the can crystal purchase network. That, yeah, yeah, and she does it all by hand by herself. It is absolutely amazing, beautiful jewelry. Um, and very unique to the person because she chooses that crystal to fit your energy. So yeah. it's fascinating um, what she's done with it and she's how She's got works. one of the only meteor-infused type crystals that has all of the elements. I think it's R like 23 or R is it 23 or 26, Lori? I think it's, it's three. R like 23, and it has all of the different elements in it for healing, psychic ability. And she sent me one of those. It fits in the palm of my hand. It's beautiful. Wow, and, uh, that's that's another thing. I will boost my energy. I keep it next to my bed, so when I do want to have an experience or hook up with Lori or anybody else, I have that aura light with me. Yeah, also, also good for that is lapis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds to me like um, that with what you're doing. So this has been a very fascinating, um, <laughs> you know, subject. <laughs> I mean, talking about shared dreaming and now. You guys have had some pretty cool experiences, but in the beginning, you were talking about just regular dreaming and how they have different meanings. So yes. I wanted to, um, I want to propose something to you. I had a dream last night that was really interesting, and I wanted to kind of see what your thoughts were. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so anyway, I had this dream uh, that something put us all to sleep. Okay. Like, Everybody in the world went to sleep. And then when we all woke up, it was a different world. Mm -hmm. and the sky was like illuminating and it, it, it had this energy that you could see move and it had a lot, of, a lot of pinks and purples and it was really like, like moving. And I, I was driving in a car. Actually, I was driving in a truck and there was this ledge, almost like a, um, a ledge on a mountain. Like a cliff. Yeah. Like a cliff. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the edge of it. And, mm -hmm. and for some reason another, I decided that I was going to drive off the cliff. Mm -hmm. and, and No it, limits. And it mm -hmm. caught me. And I was like floating and going, woo! Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh -huh. this, and then I went back on to the to the road and I thought, wow. No harm. No harm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really so cool. the truck is your spiritual vehicle. So that's mm -hmm. what you're traveling through life in right now. And then to me, it just represents there's a no holds bar because we are under the necessary veil of forgetfulness because we're not supposed to remember what's going on. But the trick to all this is, is when you do remember it, it catapults you into a whole different um, state of consciousness. And then you realize what you're working towards is that enlightenment. So mm -hmm the skies and everything that That's you're purple, looking at, you're like teetering on that. And then you quickly realize once you went over the edge that you didn't need anything to, to, to be underneath you. You have the freedom to move about uh -huh. and do what you wanted to do. And you put yourself on a path. It was literally like keeping me from falling, that energy. Uh -huh. from the sky. Uh -huh. it, mm -hmm. was like, it was sort of like a, it was, you know, it's you're like grounded that to your spirituality. Yeah, it's that yeah. inner self-knowing and, and trust you have now mm -hmm. that you're on a, on a good path and that nothing's going to let you fall, that you're going to be held up and lifted and, and you can control with your path. In other words, you're gaining confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's another part of the dream. <laughs> so in this new world, um, in this dream, everybody was connected to a person and it seemed like it was their person. 
like it was their twin soul or something like that. It was mm-hmm. their, it was, it was the person that they're supposed to be meant to have. And Your perfect match, so to speak. Yeah. It was like, everybody was automatically paired. Mm-hmm. And, and then there was a child that came from it. Mm-hmm. And I woke up and I was thinking about it and I was thinking, well, what a great dream. This is so cool. <laughs> and then I went back to sleep. And then when I, w- when I went back into the dream, this time there were people that were fighting it. They were like, nobody's going to pair me up with somebody that I don't want to be with. I'm not going to be forced to have a child. And, da, 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 and it was like this, there's, and I'm thinking, wow, what different that? impulse, mm-hmm. separate impulse. Your mm-hmm. consciousness, the two of you, you bring your consciousness and they bring theirs and you come together and you create a whole new consciousness between the two of you. And my, and the child. this is my understanding, which represents the child. Yes. And then you have your 3d experience where you're here on earth and you're experiencing all the, Well, let's just say all the junk that we have to go through to expand ourselves. But um, that energy that is created becomes really who you both are. And and then it kind of emanates from that perspective. It's kind of a resistance. The way I see it is it's a it's it's a separate impulse. The one that she that she just described is where you is what you want to be. You're, and you, it takes the two of you to create something new, which is the birth of a child, represents your new level of consciousness, rising above it all. Mm-hmm. But then you're reminded in the dream that you still have your foot mm-hmm. on the on the on in the matter, and there's going to be opposition and resistance to the very notion of there being the mm-hmm. ability to be on a higher pathway. And so mm-hmm. you have all of those emotions, experiences, and feelings that are out there that other people are putting out there that's creating separation and division. So it's creating resistance. And mm-hmm. so you might not be able to partner up with just the right person uh, to do what you want to do, but it also tells me that it's not about everybody connecting because that's kind of like... You're already oh, connected. You know, it's like mm-hmm. a utopia, and that's not what life really is. So the reality mm-hmm. of life on this planet is that it's set up for us to experience different things and make the difficult choices. And we're going to meet up with people that don't connect with us. So, so we're not going to necessarily have that child with them, but we can have it from within. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Very enlightening. (laughs) (laughs) You you know, Teresa, I am so impressed with your growth. It's. (laughs) Thank you. I mean, I, you are just this beaming (laughs) <laughs> positive energy that well, is... folks like you had a lot to do with that you helped me get through some of those early blocks around yeah. just before I met Lori just before Lori and I started working together I went through a whole process with you Michelle she yeah I come out of a dark night of the soul and I mm-hmm. came into your your hands and you got me to open up and got me to realize I had blocks and what that was all about so you opened yourself up to new concepts mm-hmm. and ideas and when you do that you free your mind And then you realize that so much more is possible. And that's where people have a hard time getting to because you're so programmed to think a certain way because you're in the earth school and you got to think outside the box. And when you do, that's where the growth comes in. I'm very blessed to be sitting here with both of you right now. (laughs) Two of the people that meant the most to me in this, in this growth. And you, Michelle, you didn't even know it because (laughs) <laughs> you were putting those programs together. It was something new for you. You were you were trying different things. You had different clients. You had limited, to, but you spent enough time with me. And I listened to enough of your meditation videos and went through your course, just one part of the course. And I tried to get deeper into it, as you know, and I did on my own. Um, but if it hadn't have been for that, I wouldn't have been able to make the next leap and understand things and open up to Lori when she came along and recognize her for who she was. Wow. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I've been blessed in that way. So and other people too. <laughs> Definitely yeah. have been blessed. <laughs> yeah. yes. That it, wow, it's such a, this is such a beautiful story between the two of you guys, and I I love this. I love hearing. You know, you know me. I love all the supernatural stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, we do too. <laughs> Mystical and you know all the the exciting fun things that you can do. 
it's it's always so cool to talk to other people that are experiencing really beautiful experiences like this. And and so I feel really blessed that you guys have come on here and shared your experiences with me and others. So um, with that, I really just want to say thank you guys for coming on and you know, talking about this. And you guys, if you want to be able to get a hold of them, they have a YouTube channel. And yeah. actually, there's several. So, but there's one that both of them are on together, and it's called Andromeda 7. Andromeda 7 Celestial Gateway. Yep, we're on YouTube. We come on every Friday night. Uh, let's see, uh, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard, 8 o'clock Central, and 9 o'clock Eastern. And uh, cool. we often run trailers and give you a little bit of insight as to what we're going to talk about on that Friday. And yep. Tuesdays comes a little video comes out. But we're all about, you know, sharing our experiences. And um, that's mm -hmm. really what it's all about, sharing what we've learned and hoping that it helps others. Keep in mind that when you're doing these dreams, whether it's through a regular dream or a lucid share dreaming, sometimes you learn so much about yourself. Mm-hmm that you don't even realize it until the dream is over. And then you're like, oh, I realize why that happened in that dream. Mm -hmm. We both usually walk away with something new and different about ourselves or our connection to each other. Mm -hmm. So you get, you get a great, it's a very growing experience. It's not just an R&R, &R, let's go on vacation and take a dive and go scuba diving. Right. There's actually it's about a lot more going on. Yeah. 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 Wow. So amazing. It's so beautiful. I love the subject. And um, Flory, Pure Love Ascension, is that a YouTube channel? Yes, uh, that's the second. It's more of a backup. It's uh, a channel I started originally. So if you wanted to know more about the Ascension process that I went through, I kind of chronicled it in the very yeah. beginning. And then it yeah. grew into, and then I met Teresa in this group. And boy, Things just shifted and changed. So we decided to start the um, Andromeda 7 Celestial Gateway program. And we've been doing that for quite, gosh, many years now and over uh, 200 episodes. Michelle, you've been on our uh, channel before a couple of times, and uh, we sure yeah. enjoyed having you on there. Yeah. But you bring a lot to the table, and we are so grateful and appreciative of your time and energy. Absolutely. So much yeah. love and thank, uh, thank you. Well, I really appreciate this. This has been great. Um, this subject is, like I said, it's a fun subject. It's it's something yeah. that people enjoy. I know. It's not your every day, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't like dreaming anyway? You know. Yeah. And you know, to dream about something really cool and to be in control of it, and then bring somebody into your dream, you know, and experience a shared experience. That's really cool. You have uh, you to have complete, your... total trust in that other partner, that person, yeah. or whoever you bring in. You must have love and trust beyond yeah. anything. If that energy will affect you when you come back into this reality, that energy affects you. Both positive and not so positive. And the not so positive you don't necessarily want because you might be opening doorways that don't need okay. to be open. All right, so you guys, okay. y'all heard that. Be very careful okay. when you do this experiment. <laughs> And and um, make sure that it's somebody that you really trust and you're very connected with. And with that being said, I just want to thank you guys for showing up. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. We're going to have Lachelle, and she is going to be talking about her new book. Um, and I think it's, um, I forget the name of it now. It's something about God. It's God. <laughs> like God in or something like that, but it's going to be uh -huh. a great, it's going to be a great episode um, where she's talking about her book and I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful yeah. day. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Don't Thank leave. you. Don't leave. Bye -bye.